Hello architects and designers. This is Mike from Geopogo. In this video, we're going to show you the ins and outs of Geopogo cities. We're going to show you how to navigate Geopogo cities, how to load different data sets in Geopogo cities from Cesium and the Google Maps API. And we're going to show you how to import your models from Revit, SketchUp, apply materials and capture renderings using AI. Let's get started. To begin, we're going to click here on the cities panel. And so you'll notice that you can start by either creating a new map, which allows you to load city data anywhere in the world. We will show this in another video, or you can click on one of our preloaded city maps. So you can click on cities such as Boston, Denver, Chicago, Vegas, New York, San Francisco, Vancouver, Canada, or Windsor and Detroit. As well, you can click over here to the settings panel to adjust graphics. You can also see the input guide that gives you assistance on controls for Geopogo cities. And as you use Geopogo cities, you can click on load files to then go ahead and load your last saved project. So let's click on cities and let's click on the great city of Windsor and Detroit. So let's get started by talking about data sets that load with Geopogo cities. The two main sources of data that we provide for city context is OpenStreetMap data and the Google Maps API data. Now, over time, the goal is to load in many different city data sets and layers for users to choose from. And with each update, you should start to see more data options become available. So when we open a map, we are presented here with the Google Maps API. And the Google Maps API is loading and streaming in data that is very similar to Google Earth. Now, any data that's available on Google Earth or Google Maps is available here in Geopogo Cities. And so to begin with, we're going to click on the data layers panel that's on the left of the screen. And you can see here that we're presented with four data options. We have the Google Maps data. We can turn that off and we can turn on what's called the OSM or OpenStreetMap data. And we can turn on the terrain that accompanies that. Now, this data here is often requested by architects and urban planners who are looking for simple massing models of cities and buildings. And they do this so that they can present their design projects with context, but it allows them to focus on their design versus seeing the complexity of the city. We can turn these layers off and we also have what's called the Google Maps view with no shadows. Now you can see that this map layer is much brighter than the previous Google Maps layer and what we've done is we've turned off its ability to cast shadows. So you can see here that I'm filtering through night today but you don't see any shadows projecting off the buildings. And if I turn on the original Google Maps layer, you can see here now that we're able to cast shadows. And I'm just going to go in here into the settings and I'm just going to increase the graphic quality for all of these so that we can see buildings project and cast their shadows. In fact, let's zoom in just a little bit. There we go. And so we can see here now that buildings too are also able to cast shadows. Okay, in next tutorial, we'll move on to controls. Let's get started with controls. So to begin with, we have six different camera options that users can select from. And by default, we're in the target orbit camera mode. And so this camera mode is simply the ability to move around and navigate freely 
around the city. And so to move in this camera mode, you can simply start by using the WASD keys. W to move forward, A to move to the left, D to move to the right, and S to move backwards. Now we can also control this by using our mouse. So we control the camera where we're looking by clicking and holding the right mouse button and this lets us move around the scene. We can also scroll in and out using the middle mouse button. And so we scroll in to zoom in and then we can scroll out to zoom out. And we can also double click to focus in on an area, like for example, some of these parking lots here, or I'll even click over here on this building. And that will allow us to pick areas of focus that we can double in and then begin to orbit around, as you can see. We'll explore the other camera modes in more detail as we move through the tutorial. Okay, so with the data layers options mastered and the camera controls mastered, we can begin to place buildings in the scene. Now, we started by simply allowing users to place building designs within their city. And so you can see here that we have loaded a whole number of preloaded building designs that you can place. And this is meant for to either have fun as a city gamer or to showcase and just simply demo the power of the platform. And these tools will continue to be enhanced and will transform over time. The GeoPogo team plans to add more buildings and more designs. And we also plan to gamify it, allowing game users of game simulation and city editing tools powers to have fun and effectively play SimCity for real cities on top of their designs. And so you can see here I'm placing buildings all over the city. We have foliage such as trees. So I can zoom in here and I can begin to place trees. I can also click regenerate, which allows me to place multiple trees or objects throughout and I can click on different tree types so we'll just go ahead and dress this all up here in fact maybe we'll forest the entire city turn all these parking lots into parks and so we can ultimately plant trees all over the city along with other arrays of bushes and plants as we update these tools, we plan to have landscaping tools, gardening tools, water tools, and more. And of course, we can also go in and we can go into the free fly camera mode, which lets us fly around the city. And of course, I can come down here and I can enter in what's called the third person camera mode. And so this lets me walk around and explore the city. Now you can see here that this is the Google Maps API mesh and this Google Maps API mesh will refine over time. We expect Google to constantly update the capabilities of this mesh. And uh, we imagine in only a couple of years, this all may become extremely photorealistic. Okay, the next thing we can do is we can begin to import models from Autodesk Revit, SketchUp, and other sources such as Maya, 3ds Max, or even Blender. And what we do is we go in and we click on the menu, import, and we can import our JLB models. Now, we can also import in what's called Datasmith models directly from Revit or SketchUp as well, but please note that you cannot save these models. You can import them in, but once you close the program, it won't be saved. 
Whereas importing as JLB or JLTF, you can save these models and reload them for next time. So let's go ahead and click here. Then we can go in and we can load in a project model. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna load in a model from Blender. And so you can see here that this model is now importing in. And we can use the controls, the X, Y, and Z controls to move the model around. And so you just click, wait for it to highlight, and then you can grab and you can place these buildings. Well, let's go ahead and take this model. And let's go and drop it right here. I can also press T to filter the different controls. So T gives me the control to scale the building move the building and rotate the building into place. And so here we have our building here. I'm just going to go to settings real quick, make sure that's all good to go. And I can also delete existing buildings that we have placed into our scene. So now we have our new building design model in Windsor looking out and facing Detroit. Here we go. Now, using the FreeFly camera, I'm free to use my controls and I can go ahead and I can come up to my new imported building design. Position ourselves, wait for all the data to load and then I can go over to the render panel and I can capture a screenshot of my design. I can also render in here as well. I can save out where I want the rendering to go, my output format, my resolution, and my sample count. And we can even turn on the path tracer for more enhanced rendering. But for right now, we're gonna do our final controls which of course we can come up to the building. And if we have things like balconies or interior views, let's just go ahead and adjust our sun. We can explore it in third person mode, or we can come into first person mode and we can explore our design and see things like the views out our windows or our balconies. And we can go back into our free fly camera and we can even come up and explore views from the roof. So let's come around here. This penthouse is gonna have an extraordinary view. And we'll just wait for a second for the data all to load. And of course, we can show off and showcase to our clients, the public, city officials, and even buyers, the great views that they're going to enjoy once this building is complete. Okay, so with our building model placed on site, and remember we can flip between rotate we can position our building into place exactly where we want it. We can also adjust our field of view and we can adjust our depth of field. So we can go in here and there we go. Let's get that set up. Beautiful. And then we can adjust the aperture correctly. Then we can come over to render, go into our screenshots, capture and save our screenshot here. We can also open that screenshots folder and so we can see our rendering right here. And we can also click on the render panel for a more higher quality rendering. So you can change the output format, you can change the output resolution and the sample count, and you can enable the path tracer and hit render. Okay, and after we're complete our rendering, we're gonna show you our AI tools. So we've been working with an AI platform called Runway AI and you can use Runway AI directly on their website 
and on Runway's website, we can go ahead and we can start a new session. Now, remember, you will have to log in and create an account. We are working on a Geopogo AI platform on our website using Runway's API, and we are working to have that up in the coming weeks. So we're going to start a new session and we're going to click here to upload an image. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to locate our screenshot. Let that upload. And then we're going to type in what we want the animation to do. So for example, I can type in adjust sun to sunset, turn on city and building lights. We can adjust between how many seconds we want the video to do. So five or 10 seconds. And we can also pick which rendering engine we wish to use. So we're gonna do the Gen 3 Alpha. And we're gonna click Generate. Okay, and here we have our prepared animated footage and let's press play. Oh, and that is just fantastic. And you can play around with it and edit all your different scenes. Okay, we thank everybody for watching these video tutorial series. We have more on the way, including applying materials and much more. Okay, talk soon and enjoy.